Okay, hello class. I just wanted to uh, finish up this last part of the lecture that we had the other day on technique charts. So there are several types of technique charts and I will go over them for you now. One type is known as a variable KV chart. And simply stated, the key word here is variable in that the kilovoltage will vary but the same mass will be used for a particular body part. So if you look at the example over here, you have a variable KV chart for the knee. So the mass will remain 12, and based on the part thickness, the KV will go up. And if you see, for every centimeter, pretty much, that the part thickness increases, the KV is going up approximately 2 KV. Now, this is a chart for the knee only. There can be multiple variable KV charts for the body part or of choice. The second type of technique chart is a fixed KV chart. So similar to the variable, the key word here is fixed in that the KV will remain the same and the mass in this case will change. So if you take a look at these three images here, A, B, and C, you have 50 mass, 80 mass, and 120 mass, but the KV remains the same. One of the advantages of having a fixed KV approach is that the density is much easier to control. If you remember, you double the mass, you will double the dose, as well as double the density. So a considerable disadvantage, though, however, is that because the KV is fixed, your contrast will be fixed at a certain level. And it will be very difficult to change that. So the fixed KV method uses the same KV, but the mass will be varied to compensate for any changes in density caused by different part thickness. And you could look at patients as being placed into different groups of size. We discussed this a little bit in class, but the rule of thumb is to double what you think is the medium technique, so let's say you have a technique in mind for a medium patient, then you would double that for a large patient and half it for a small patient. The advantage of using a fixed kilovoltage, as we said, is generally you can easily manipulate your density and you will have a uniform contrast being that your KV is the same, and let's remember that KV is known as the controlling factor for contrast. So a technique chart is usually based on a particular body part, perhaps a region or area. It could even get down to a particular view, and it needs to have several parameters for people to understand. So a technique chart has to have the name or the exam. It has to have a position, if there is a projection indicated. Then the MA time, KV, and SID need to be in there. There may also be categories for film screen speed or perhaps grid ratio. Remembering that as the grid ratio goes up, so will your exposure. And that about does it for us. Uh, please keep in mind that this lecture and the previous lecture, which were all about patient factors, represent approximately 10% of the questions on the exam. Uh, so there's another 90% of all the things that we've gone over in the semester. So I'd just like to thank everyone for 
uh, participating in class, and good luck on your final exam. Thank you.